our uh, bidding up to 1250 bucks for the backpack program. We'll take bids throughout the course of the uh, program today. Maybe the rest of the week, for that matter. We'll see. Uh, right now, I'm pretty happy with the numbers, but they yeah. could go higher, Bill. Yeah. And shout out is uh, due to uh, WRNR for donating these tickets. It's something that uh, uh, is for excellent cause. Also, it's for a sporting event that's got the attention of these other states. So it'll be a wonderful way to spend an afternoon. This is a marquee matchup. You it couldn't is. buy individual game tickets for this one, which is kind of like the state of college football these days. Yeah. When you get a marquee opponent like a Penn State coming in or when you had the Pitt-West Virginia series there for a couple of years, you package a whole bunch of tickets to games like Albany that nobody wants to see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I got those too. You want to see Penn State? you got to see Albany. <laughs> and uh, the, they're good seats, well located, so it's uh, it's an, quite a good opportunity. So yeah, thanks, Mike Hornby. Colin, I think, has the, uh, the view from uh, Section 103 where the seats are, right there around the uh, 10, 15-yard line. So that's uh, field level. Very nice. And also, uh, thanks to, uh, uh, to Lisa and everybody involved with the backpack program, there's a real need in our society today. And the kids are um, sometimes overlooked or not recognized and not getting the food that they really need. So. Well, and what I like, no questions asked. Yeah, yeah. You need the food. Yeah. A family exactly says right. they need yep, the food. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Give them the food. Yeah, good point. So, so thousand two fifty, you can bid on uh, these tickets on our Facebook comment section and site there, TV Ten Martinsburg, or you can call two six three six five four zero or two six three six five six eight. Right now, uh, six five eight six. Right now, Maria Lawrence and holds the highest bid at one thousand two fifty. And she's encouraging people to get out and bid. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, because I'm already going. <laughs> I have two tickets on the forty yard line, so. You, so you were already going? Well, this, that's, oh, yeah. This is very generous of you. Yeah. 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 Now, I, I wonder if she'll donate these four tickets to you and... I'll be working that day. I'll be busy. Uh, but if you if you yeah. donate the ticket, you could probably make an exception. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our guest in this segment is Joyce White. She is the Deputy Superintendent of Operations for Jefferson County Schools. And we are pleased to have her in studio, I believe, for the first time. The first time. Yeah. And, yes, well, with you, yes. Well, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure. It's great to have you on the program. Uh, the school system in Jefferson County is considering the closure of North Jefferson Elementary School. How long has this been under consideration, Joyce, and what, re what caused this decision right now to be made, or to be under discussion, I should say? Well, it, it became under discussion um, around February this year. Um, you know, we're, we're building a couple of new schools, and we take a look at redistricting and in that process it came up uh, by some board members for discussion so once that comes up for discussion um, as deputy superintendent of operations i'm tasked with exploring it and that starts a process for me which is guided by west virginia department of Ed education policy uh, it's driven by policy 6204 which is the closing of schools so uh, once that uh, became real uh, I tasked many members on my team with creating a document that has everything from birth and death rates in Jefferson to the historical Roma for the last 10 years of the school. Uh, we also talk in the document about the receiving school, which would be T.A. Lowry. So we put this document together and we got it together in July and really studied the data hard and made sure it was, was accurate you know to our standard and then we conveyed that to the public so uh, the next piece is that the schools received the document in advance of hearings and we made it public and transparent to everyone but everyone in our school district has the document in their hands and we will be doing hearings uh, September 16th which will take place right at North Jefferson Elementary at 6 p.m. And we encourage people to make comments and uh, let us hear your voice, let the members hear your voice and uh, say what you need to say. Well, and, and then we'll have a hearing September 17th at T.A. Lowry Elementary School at 6 p.m. What year was the school built? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I don't have that right in my head. Roughly? <laughs> is, it, is it 50 I years would say, old? Yeah, it's 50 years old. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely I actually, 50. I actually worked in the school system when T.A. Lowry was built. I was the public information officer, and I remember all of the, the bad R word, redistricting. Um, and 
what's interesting about those two schools, Lowry and, and North, is they're within, what would you say, Joyce, two three po- miles? 2.1 two two miles. miles. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Because that was another issue way back in the right. day. So Lowry was built in whatever, 90? 90, 90, I want to say 91. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, so that was sort of some mm-hmm. of the question, where's the population growth and where do you build a school and where's the land um, that you can buy? Uh, that's available then. So, um, so it is interesting. The other piece, of course, is that that t- uh, that North Jefferson sits adjacent to a development that has had some issues over the years. It's called Fox Glen. If you're if you're familiar with that area, um, and you know, for a while now, I haven't heard recently because I haven't. Uh, haven't worked in the school system or in the news business for a while, um, but some, you know, pockets of uh, issues with uh, with violence and and so on and so forth that may have all changed. I have not heard, but yeah, you know, these days I think we can see that anywhere. Pretty, You're right, pretty much, Maria, and uh, that's certainly been a, a lovely little development for us when I started my career as a teacher in Jefferson County Schools and I remember you by the way okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> but when I started there as a teacher I taught in North Jefferson and uh-huh. I love I loved the people Pat uh, Blanc was the principal he for was oh. uh, yeah I absolutely loved uh, the Fox Glen residents still do and we've been delighted the past several years to add busing into Fox Glen, even though they sit right there and they can walk. But actually, I think there are 139 eligible bus riders and we bus 134 of them. No so, kidding. No kidding. You know, it just these days, when you talk about walking and students, you, you want to make sure that they're safe on a bus and that everyone has access to sure. the transportation. Sure. So, 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 Joyce, what's changed? Uh, Lowry and North Jefferson Elementary have coexisted within 2.1 miles of each other for the last 23, 24 years. Correct. Uh, uh, what has what has changed that now you're thinking about closing North Jefferson? Well, I think it's just population. Um, Is there, it decreasing? Yes, in that district okay. in particular. For yeah. example, we've had, if you look at the population trends the last 10 year, years, I'm going to say roughly 250 students in that school. Now, of, of those students, um, as we look at it, if you look, average the attendance there, they're, they're pretty much about a net zero in growth. Um, so we've studied that for quite a while. In addition to that, they have 177 students that are actually in that district. So some students transfer out and some, some students transfer, transfer in. And we're looking at 108 families. So when we take a look at that and you know the financial aspect of being fiscally responsible, and as I said, I started my career there at North Jefferson so it's near and dear to my heart and certainly an emotional and difficult decision but when you look at that part of it and that piece of it and redistricting where your population lies it it just kind of makes sense okay I'm excuse me a second let me follow up on this Maria if I can uh so there you're saying there's been a decrease from around over slightly over 200 to 177 now no no what I'm saying is that we that's been the population of the school but we allow transfers in jefferson county so with the transfers they receive in it bumps up their population if you looked at our districting right now the eligible students in that district would be 177 eligible to attend it and so the rest of their population comes from transfers into the district some of those are transfers because other schools are too full and they just receive that population when the schools become too full. And TA Lowry has the excess excess capacity, capacity. to accommodate the. That was uh, my question. They okay. do. <laughs> okay. They do have the capacity uh, to accept those students. Absolutely. Would you need to do any type of expansion at all there no. under this plan? No. no. Okay. Interesting. Is the building physically in decent shape, Joyce? North Jefferson is in in decent shape, yes, for its age. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul Espinosa, who spent some time substitute teaching, by the way, in the Jefferson County School System, sent me a thing about the history of the school built in uh, 1971-72 school year. It was a $400,000 project approved by the voters of Jefferson County, November 5, 1968. 
A $3.1 million bond levy was also provided funding for two other elementary schools at the time. And the land was 12 acres <clears throat> purchased from uh, Harry Reed Jenkins and Millard Lee Jenkins in 1970 for $12,000. That's awesome, isn't it? <clears throat> I, wish, I wish the prices were like that today. Yeah. $12,000. Kindergarten was added in 1972. So uh, I pass one of the new schools being constructed on my drive home every day on Shepherdstown Road on the way uh, yes. down to Halltown. And that's, yes. that's a pretty good-sized project there. Yes, it is. Uh, what is the distance between that school and... And North Jefferson Elementary, roughly, Joyce, do you know? That's my first question, and I'll have a second one after that. I want to say it's about about six miles or so. About six miles. So yeah. is, is it likely that any of the kids who go to North Jefferson would be going to that school? No. If, if North Jefferson closed? No. Okay, so that's a whole separate issue. Correct. Tell me the difference in regards to a school built in 2024, 2025, versus one built in 71, 72, in terms of the modernization of that building and the technical aspects of it that are necessary now in a different age? Well, in a different age, of course, we're very energy conscious, right? Because a lot of our old systems work on boilers. They get aging equipment. The, the main thing with an old building is just the roofs and the HVAC. And then you're going to take a look at um, that doesn't include the, the pretty upgrades, right? Because after a while, they age. They still have their original tile, et cetera. So in new schools, um, the ones that I am uh, charged with overseeing the building of in Jefferson County, we have put geothermal systems in, which will be a pretty significant savings to heating and cooling in that building. And um, we're using LVT tiles versus the old old tiles you see when you think of walking in a school, right, that are the 12 by 12. So uh, that's going to be a, a good savings just because it won't be labor intensive. That It's not a floor that you have to wax or, or keep up like that. So we've made them um, with insulated concrete form walls. So they're very well insulated, which should also help with energy costs. Of course, we'll use LED lighting, you know, all that kind of stuff will we'll wrap into the school and then it'll just make it much more energy efficient. And that alone is a significant savings. In regards to the computer aspects of a school now, uh, I suspect you don't need as much computer line running through through a school because of the ability for Wi-Fi. Is that uh, also a possibility? You do need wireless access points. Uh, I've seen the cabling, and if you looked up in the cable tray, <laughs> I would beg to differ with you. Still there's a lot, a, there's okay. a lot of cabling that goes into it um you know behind the scenes and a lot of wireless access points simply because we don't go traditionally like we did to a computer lab years ago right. we have laptops in every room and teachers use a lot of technology and tie it in with usonic boards and incorporate the technology into their teaching so i would say versus the past it, it's a lot more intense than it was yes well it just learn something new every day then. right yeah. right if you do close north jefferson elementary what will the building be used for the, the old board, building. What yeah, do you, that's a great question. Yeah, okay. uh, the board determines the use of the building. And so they have the option to repurpose it um, and use it for something else the school system needs. Or they have the option to decide to sell the building. So they will have to determine that via vote. I've seen many elementary schools turned into senior living centers, repurposed, refurbished, reconstructed, basically the same shell, but uh, different inside to it. And they become residences, essentially. I've seen that, uh, there's at least a handful of cases I can say it, tell you driving around different uh, cities and communities. Yes, I, I wouldn't say that was off the table for some residents. You know, I get inquiries and uh, that that might be a possibility that someone would buy one of our I former can, schools for that. Mm -hmm. I can say for my my life now, my role now at Hospice of the Panhandle, there's a definite need for um, for nursing home assisted living. Um, there, the the few that we have are really at capacity often. So, but yet your nursing home residential living, uh, you're acquiring the high maintenance yes, of a 1971 and, building, and the scrutiny by the by the yeah. state. Anybody yeah. who wants to get into that line of work is just. Whoo. Joyce, what's the mood of the community right now in regards to this school? Do you know yet? Uh, I really don't. I've I've been with the North Jefferson staff several times, and uh, they know that it's that's on the table and. 
and they're emotional about it. You know, they've had a few questions about it, but they're just uh, watching the process. We hope they all speak their mind at the hearing, and uh, we'll see how it goes. How about the neighborhood? Anybody from the neighborhood have any public comment for you yet? Not yet. No, not yet. And in terms of staffing then, Joyce, I assume that all of the folks would just um, move to other schools, T.A. Lowry. I sort of have an idea how that all works, too. <laughs> well, you know, we have to announce how the staffing will go in our uh, 6204 closing documents. So we've outlined all of that. Um, we have such a shortage in teaching. You know, there's always a job in Jefferson. So when we move people around, we will use the transfer process to mm -hmm. do it. I mean, RIF would be the last thing that we would do, certainly. And we've not explored that option because we always need have it. a need. We don't. Yeah, we always have a need for certified teachers. And the grade levels at uh, North and T.A. Lowry refresh our memory. At Pre-K through five. Okay. Joyce White, our guest here. She is the Jefferson County Schools Deputy Superintendent of Operations. Uh, consideration for the closing of North Jefferson is underway, and there's two public hearings regarding this for the opportunity of the public to speak. Joyce, can you tell us those dates again? Yes, yeah, September 16th, 6 p.m. at North Jefferson, um, and the community and all interested parties are invited. Um, you can sign up for public comment no later than 5.45 that evening to speak. Uh, speakers are limited to three minutes, and they may also submit written comments at T.A. Lowry, uh, September 17th at 6 p.m. We'll go through the same process. The two schools that are being constructed, are they both elementary schools? They are. And will they have the, a similar capacity of students, or will they be larger? Their capacities are 450 each. And the so, capacity at North Jefferson is in the twos? Right. Well, not the capacity of the building. Um, that's the attendance. Yeah, that's the attendance in the well, building. Can it? Accommodate 400? No, I don't I don't suspect it could. It's okay. a rather small school. Is the decision pretty much made? Is, is there really anything the public could do at this point to persuade Jefferson County Schools to not close it? I don't think the decision is made. I think the board members are carefully studying their information that they've received. They will be open uh, and invite the community and listen to the community and gather feedback then they'll take all of that information, make an informed decision, and take a vote. Once a vote is taken, what happens in terms of the process of then actually closing the school, and then when would the school actually be closed? I don't want you to have to get, a, get in trouble by getting ahead of yourself, no, I, but I can pro explain. projecting <laughs> that, that would be the case. Right. So if we project that, that it would close um, and there would be a vote that uh, – a majority vote of the board to close the schools what would then happen is we would finalize the documents and then it goes on to the West Virginia Board of Education and they take a vote in December for any school that's closing in the state of West Virginia and at their December meeting they they decide to close the school or not so they have the final say and then once they decide that uh, the schools that they vote to close would close beginning next school year so if they voted in January, then May 31st, basically the end of the school year, that would be the last day of school at North Jefferson. That would be correct. So at the and, time... Well, I'm sorry, Maria, real oh, quick. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm assuming the new schools being built would need to be finished, before, at least one of them before then, so you could accommodate the moving of 200 students? T.A. Lowry's already built, so the moving of those students is... Could they take 200 students? Yes. It, it sounds as if... Well, actually, it wouldn't be yeah. 200, remember? 177, 177 minus correct. the transfers, yeah. Right. It, it sounds as if that your the decision-making is not necessarily built, built upon uh, the fact that you've, uh, uh, you've got excess capacity. But by building the additional schools, you will have excess capacity, will you not? Yes, we'll have some extra capacity, and there will be a redistricting that will occur um, to shift some of the population where we're we're seeing you know a little bit of growth which would be more toward a ransom area so you're shifting the the uh, uh foci point for uh, uh for for your growth projected growth over from where you have right now right well if you look at jefferson county's growth overall with our trends uh we haven't seen growth in our student population over the last 10 years yeah. it's uh it has remained steady, and if, if anything, it's declined a little bit. 
You're so we've taken that into account as we've had this overall district-wide discussion of, um, you know, to close or not to close and, and how we want to shift our population. It sounds so. like you built before you decided to close. And you said there's not been any growth in the county, but yet you've, you've, you've built at least two new schools. We have because we have facilities in the county that are aging. I mean, much to Maria's point earlier, when you start with these aging facilities, you want to start thinking about the future, about the potential for growth, and about just replacing your aging facilities. We should ask uh, Delegate Espinosa what... Uh, uh, Wright Denny, and you may even know what the year of that. I mean, that is. I know Wright Denny's a hundred years old. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, yes. Yeah, and it has a bunch of history. It downtown does. Charlestown. It does. But I was going to ask about. So, if memory serves, North Jefferson, South Jefferson were built because it's the same. It's the same uh, school building plan and C W Shipley is as well. Okay. Yes. So those, however, are going to maintain they're going to be maintained and and continue to serve the student population there. correct if you think about where south jefferson lies out in summit point that's it's an outlier it's really out it there sure so is. it's got to it's got to remain to serve the I students i remember going in that out there area. and like getting to virginia and saying i've gotten lost here yeah you went right. too far i went yeah. too far she went too far <laughs> you crossed the state line you've gone too far <laughs> our guest has been joyce white as uh, jefferson county schools considers the closing of north jefferson elementary school with two new elementary schools coming online what will the names of those schools be joyce uh, they're just replacement schools, so they'll remain Ranson Elementary and Shepherdstown Elementary. There will be no name change, Very just good. location. Do you have any other new schools in the long-term plan uh, that you've released publicly? In our long-term plan, uh, we have a third high school in our site. So, any idea about when? Oh, that would that would be ten plus years out at this point. But you have to start thinking about those kind of things now. Do you have a? A landmass uh, plan for that right now, an idea where that might be located? Not at this point, but I'll tell you, we built Ranson and we built Shepherdstown with a campus in mind. So when you talk about land, I guess, yes, I do have an idea, Rob. I must not be awake yet. Um, the, I, I'm not either, so it's okay. <laughs> the uh, plan for that would be to put it at, at the Ranson campus. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that seems to be the new way to do things where you put elementary, middle, and high school all within all a, together. a block. Right. And I Correct. think it's a great idea. Right. Right. So both of those were bought. I mean, Ranson has 130 acres. Shepherdstown has 100 acres. So uh, Shepherdstown would be planned for an elementary and a middle school eventually, and then um, high school at, at Ranson. Are you projecting a certain year when you're expecting population and student growth to ramp up in Jefferson County? I'm waiting any time now. Um, it's, but, it's fascinating but, you know, and it's kind of stalled a little bit. Yeah, it has. Um, but if you think about it, Rob, there are um, other competing ways to get educated, right? So we have about 1,400 students who 972 homeschool. Um, we have some that do uh, virtual academies, West Virginia Virtual Academy. We have a charter school in Jefferson. So when you look at population and how – Jefferson County uh, families educate their children, they have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, we honor and respect all the choices they have, but, but they have a variety of choices, and they exercise those choices in our county. Joyce, we are just about out of time. If you could, in uh, 30 seconds, restate where the two meetings will take place, what date and what time. So the North Jefferson closure hearing will take place September 16th, 6 p.m. at North Jefferson. Sign up for comment if you wish to speak no later than 545. T.A. Lowry will be September 17th at 6 p.m. at T.A. Lowry. Uh, it's been great having you on the program. You're very knowledgeable about this process, and you've explained it very nicely. I, I think uh, something that even Bill could understand, which is really uh, quite amazing. <laughs> that's quite a yeah. You, that's quite a low threshold you have to meet. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. We appreciate you. Thank you.